Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Flow control in TCP. In TCP, we have to make sure that the sender and the receiver agree on the amount of data that is going to be transferred. It could be possible that the sender is on a fast network. So the sender is able to send more information in a smaller amount of time. However, the receiver may be on a slow network or the receiver may not have enough size inside its buffer to accept all the packets that the sender has sent to it. In this case, all the extra packets that don't fit in the buffer will get lost. To avoid this loss, because TCP is a reliable protocol, to avoid loss due to this overflowing of information on the other end, we make use of something called the sending window and the receiving window. We have two types of windows in TCP. We have the sending window and we have the receiving window. And both the sender, both sides actually, will have a sending window and a receiving window each. So this means we have four windows in total if we consider both sides. So what is a sending window? In this diagram, now this is at the sender, okay, this is at the sender. In here, we have the buffer, okay, the buffer has extended and we have 200 packet, 199, 198, 197 and so on. On this side, we have the remaining side of the buffer, we have packets 301, 302, 303, 4, and so on. Now, we need to decide how many packets are we going to send or how many packets are we allowed to send to the receiver. Now, this that you see here is the window. Okay, this is the sending window, which means packets inside the sending window we can send them without any problem and we can send them at one go if we want to, all of them, because the receiver has got the space for it. Okay, This sending window size is decided by the receiver. During connection establishment, the receiver informs the sender about the size, like if, we, if, if you remember in the earlier slides when we saw connection establishment, the server sent a response saying, my received window is 5000, which means the, the client can send 5000 bytes without any problem because we know for sure that there is space on the other side for 5,000 bytes, up to 5,000 bytes, okay? Doesn't have to be 5,000. It could be 1,000, 2,000, 100, 200. But the maximum we can send is up to 5,000. So this window is what will be decided by the server or the receiver. It will say what is the maximum number of bytes it can accept. Now, so the sender, according to that information, will set the size of its sending window. What are these bytes in here? These bytes on the left-hand side? These are bytes that have been sent and we have received an acknowledgement for them. So they are no longer needed in the buffer. They are no longer needed in the buffer. These packets are packets that can be sent, okay? 
And what are these blue packets? 201 to 260. These are packets that have been sent to the receiver, but we have not yet received an acknowledgement for them. Okay? We haven't received an acknowledgement for them. So we can't remove them from the buffer yet unless we receive an acknowledgement. These 261 to 300, the white packets inside the window, these are packets that we can still send because we know that the, buff the buffer at the receiver has got space for these packets. Okay, so when we send these packets, we could again send these without any problem or waiting for the acknowledgement for these ones. When the acknowledgement is received for these blue packets, the Windows border moves to the left. Okay, so if we receive an acknowledgement for 201, this, the window will now shrink to on the left hand side, okay? So 201 will be released. At the same time, we can, once we receive a response from the server, and if we know that the, the send window size has not changed, we can then go and add more packets into it as well. So in this case, so this is how the window will move. So this is how this window will move slowly until all the bytes in the buffer are sent. It will move from left to right. So in this case, this is the first byte we are waiting for an acknowledgement. And this is the next byte we are waiting to send. Can we send byte 301 in this case? No, we can't because it's not inside the sending window. On the receiver side, okay, on the receiver side, we have a similar window called the receiving window, okay? This diagram mainly shows you how the, the window shrinks and opens, okay? If the receiver gives, says that the size of the window has gone down, then this window will have to become smaller. And if the receiver says that there's more, more bytes available, then we can open it to get in more bytes. Now this is the receive window at the receiver. In this case, again, we have the buffer at the receiver side. We have up to 200. These packets were in the buffer but they have now been taken by the process that requested them, okay? The blue bytes here, 201 to 260, these are bytes that were, have been received, okay? These are bytes that have been received and we have also sent an acknowledgement for them to the sender, but the process or the application that requested these packets has not taken them yet. So the buffer is not free yet. Okay, so this is the size of the window, this whole thing, okay? So even though we have received an acknowledgement for them, we can't release these packets or these bytes because we are still waiting for the application to take them. However, these are free bytes. So if anything comes from the sender, well, more precisely, bytes 261 onwards, we do have space for them and we can place them inside this free buffer space. 
So in this case, when the buffer will, now when the receiver sends information about its receive window to the sender, okay, so this is the sender, right? When they receive window, so at the moment our, our sending window is all this, right? It's 100 bytes. However, in the new scenario, we have 60 bytes that have been occupied. So now the receiver has the capacity to accept only 40 more bytes. So what it will do is it will send that information to the sender saying, my new receive window is 40 bytes because I don't have space for 100. And then when these become free, it will again advertise the new window size. It will expand in here and it will advertise the new receive window size. So in this way, we have the receive window size and the send window size. It grows in size and it shrinks in size based on how much free space is available. Now this process can be more easily understood with the help of an example. So first seeing the flow of information, we have the sender sending them, pushing the messages to the transport layer. The transport layer in turn pushes the segments to the receiver's transport layer. These messages are then when they are received successfully, they are pulled by the application layer or the application process requesting those packets. And then we have the acknowledgements going back on the other side. And eventually the sender also comes to know what is, what packets have been received, uh, sent successfully. Now let's look at this example here. Actually, this example, I would prefer to take it in a separate video. So we end the video here and we will take this example in the next video.